Hi, this is um, Algebra 1. This will be the last video I make. Um, a good part of this packet will be um, review over the graphing that you had, uh, mean, median, and mode, things that you knew in middle school, and various ideas like that. And then I've finished with a comprehensive review of the Algebra 1 book. Now, when you get to that, I would like for you to really do your best to do it all by yourself. If you don't remember how to work a problem, go back in the chapter, look it up. You don't need parents or tutors or friends because that's your review. That's your chance to make sure you fully understand what we're doing because you're gonna build on that next year. I'm not looking for a list of perfect answers. I'm looking for you to understand. Remember, that's our goal is to learn, okay? And you're gonna need these ideas next year. So when you finish up with that, then, then you'll be finished and um, uh, that will be it for the year. All right, right now the main focus is going to be circle graphs. You did bar graphs um, at the end of the last packet. You were supposed to hang on to it because it had a bit of a, um, uh, a little bit of a uh, outline and um, we'll continue with that as we go here. So with circle graphs, um, the, the main thing to remember about circle graphs is that they are different from other sorts of graphs because they give us a whole. Okay, and we're looking at how the various ideas are parts of a whole and how they relate to each other. So you have to know every detail. They give the example of cars in a parking lot. Okay, we have cars, we have trucks, um, we have motorcycles, but maybe you've got an RV and a school bus parked there. Okay, so if you don't want a separate category for those, you need to lump them into an other category because everything has to be accounted for. All right, it's also important that you don't have a multiple choice idea. They give the idea about ice cream flavors. If I just ask you for your, um, which ice cream flavors do you like? Maybe you like strawberry and vanilla, or maybe you like chocolate and strawberry, but if you don't have one favorite, then I have overlap, and a circle graph won't work for those. You have to change your strategy. So make sure you read. There's a lot of information here in the book that I can't cover. Here, I know you don't want to watch a two-hour video on graphing, so I'm just going to try to hit the high points there. So remember, circle graphs, we have everything, and we have the whole, and we want to relate the various parts to that. Okay, I want to look at the um, Riverside Shakespeare plays on page 347. That's what we're going to focus on. I'm going to walk you partway through that. I'm not going to work all the math for you. I know you know how to work. I know you know how to do long division, multiplication, things like that. Um, just before I start with that though, I realize that not all of you have protractors and compasses. Um, I've adjusted my compass here to, to draw circles um, on the whiteboard. And most of yours don't look like that. And compasses, is what, or the protractors, is what helps us measure the angles. Now it's okay if you don't have those. If you do and you know how to use them, by all means, do that. Uh, we mostly just want to have a good estimate. So I'm, I made a note in your packet that if I need to estimate a um, 90 degree angle, I can just use the corner of a paper. So I start with a line and I can just simply then trace the corner um, and I will have a 90 degree angle. Maybe I want a 45 degree angle. Okay, I can fold that 90 in half and draw another little angle here. I could also do 22 by folding that in half. Okay, so maybe I want um, 67 degrees. My 45 plus um, about 22 more. Make sure you're getting to the middle of the circle. I'm not here, I'm kind of reaching. And there I would have an approximately a 67 degree angle. Okay, so just do your best. We just want kind of a general representation showing that we know what's happening here. My main focus is going to be on, on the math that we're doing um, as part of this section. Okay, so if you look at the Riverside Shakespeare plays on page 347, we have four different categories. Um, you can see there in your graph, um, right here on the, on the page, I think we're gonna zoom in on that just a little bit, that we have um, comedies, we have histories, we have tragedies, and we have romances. Okay, if you'll flip the page in your book, you'll see table B, making a circle graph. And that's what we're going to be looking at here today. And then there's going to be a slight variation between what you learned in middle school and what we're going to look at today. Because in middle school, you learn to um, round your proportions, round your percentages, and then use that rounded value to come up with another number. And we don't want to do that. We want to be a little more exact. Okay, So we're always going to work 
with proportions. All right, now we haven't done just a lot with proportions in Algebra 1, we've done a little bit. If you'll notice, most of the way down on page 347, you will see that it says size of the category. I'm just going to write category over the entire group. So we'll just put the group. Remember we said circles relate the whole to one piece. And then that's going to be equal to the sector size. All right, now sector is basically a piece of the pie. If I draw this in here, go to the center and come out, that this is a sector of the circle. So as the sector is to the entire circle, and we know that circles have 360 degrees in them. So for instance, if this were a 60 degree angle, then we would know that it represented, reducing our fraction, um, one sixth of the entire circle. We're not ready for the numbers yet, but just an example there. Okay, so most of the math that you'll be doing works off this. This is a proportion. Now, when we work with proportions, we use the fundamental law of proportions that says the product of the extremes, extremes, is equal to the product of the means. Okay, now the extremes are going to be right here, the category and the circle. So we can draw a little oval through there. Product means we're going to multiply them. Product of the means are going to be the middle ones here, the group and sector. Again, product, we're going to um, multiply them together. So when we work the math in a proportion, we're going to say this times this, the product of the extremes, is equal to the product of the means. Now, we're not going to want to reduce our fractions. Now, I showed you a sample here because I was just showing you the portion of the sector it was. But let's not be reducing our fractions in the middle or we're going to lose part of the value. Okay, so keep them whole. All right, so let's look at an example here. Let's look at the comedies. On page 347, it says that there are um, 38 comedies. Wait, he has 38 plays, my mistake. 13 of them are comedies. Okay, so the category, comedies, we have a total of 13. For the group, we have 38, all right? And we want to solve this using long division. We're going to take 13 divided by 38. Okay, 38 does not go into 13, so we're gonna place our decimal and put a zero and bring our decimal up, okay? Now 38 goes into 130 approximately three times. Eight times three is 24. Carry my two, gives me 11. And we're going to subtract here. We need another zero. Um, let's see, it's going to go in approximately four times this time, I believe. Four times eight is going to be 32. Um, 12 and three gives me 15, which when I subtract will give eight need another zero, all right, and we're going to come down here, and it's going to go in here approximately twice, okay, and I know that works, and so I'm just going to leave it here. Now, the reason we had to go to three decimal places is because we want a percentage, okay, remember to make a percentage, percent means out of a hundred, per hundred, so in order to turn 34 percent into a, or 34 Hundreds into a percent, I'm going to move my decimal two places and get 34%. Now I need this extra value here because if it had been a six, I would be rounding up to 35%. Remember your rounding rules. If it's five or above, we're gonna go up to the next whole percent. If it's less than five, we're just going to truncate it or, or drop it off, okay? So 34% will be the percentage. Now, if you'll go back to the page in the book, on page 348, you'll see the math there in the second column, and that's your percent. Now notice for the proportion, they have not simply multiplied by 0.34 like you did in middle school. Okay, we're going to go back and work the entire proportion. Okay, here we just reduced the fraction and did the math to get our percents. But now we're going to say 13 out of 38 gives me what size sector? out of 360 degrees. Now I'm not going to do all the math for you here because I know you know how to do that, but remember we're going to multiply 13 times 360 degrees is equal to 38x 
To get x by itself, we're going to have to divide by 38 on both sides, which cancels here. So then this is the math I need to do to get x. If you will look again on page 348, this comes up to be approximately 123 degrees. Okay, so then I would come up here to my, um, my circle graph. I'd put in, uh, you're going to do a better job of this because you're going to at least have a straight edge and you're going to estimate some angles. And I'm going to say I need 123 degrees. So 90s across here, 123 about right here. Okay, now this is going to be something I present to someone. Okay, I'm going to be at a book club and I'm talking about Shakespeare's plays. They don't care that that's 123 degrees. What they care is that these represent comedies. Make sure yours fits inside the circle, or you can do a legend out to the side like they did, and that that is 34% um, of Shakespeare's plays. Okay, now we would do this for each one of the categories. So um, working on around, we might have um, our tragedies. I'm just gonna put a T. And then what was next? Um, histories, we'll just put an H here. And finally, our, um, our romances. Now I have done something terribly wrong here because um, romances is a smaller amount. Okay, so again, you'll want to do some sort of measuring a little bit. And then you'll want the percentages for each of them. Now you can color it, you can make it fancy if you want to. You should have a title, you should have each one of these labeled or have a legend over here and tell their percentage, not their, per not their degrees, all right? And um, draw me a nice little circle graph. Now you'll notice if you go on down on page 348 to the Tri-County Farm Supply and over onto the next page for the Glenwood Middle School, each time they have used a form of this per proportion. Whichever piece is missing, that's your X, whichever you're not given, and then you can work your proportion. Now sometimes they have already solved over here, um, and they know that it's a certain number of degrees or a certain percent. Okay, so here if they tell you 34 percent, remember before you do math on it, you're going to have to change it to 0.34 if you're solving for something over here. And then, of course, you can put 0.34 over 1 and put your X for your category, your total group. So depending on what information you're finding, you'll have to adjust. So study your examples. They have done an example, one for each type of math that you'll need to do. So study those carefully and just, and just follow the math through. Now, a quick little check when you're finished, probably even before you get to your drawing the circle, while you still have it on paper in the table form, add them up. What do you think all your degrees should add up to? There's 300 degrees in the circle, so they should add to 360. Now it might be 359, it might be 361 because we have rounded and you'll have some rounding error and it will talk about that in the text as well. Also, when you add up the, um, the categories they need to add, for instance, if we had 13 comedies, 10 tragedies, 10 histories, and five romances, if that doesn't add to 38, then I haven't included everything in the section that's important. Your percents should add to 100%, but again, because they're rounded values, it might be 99%, it might be 101%. If it's way off, that's your clue. You made a math error and you should go back and check it before you get involved in making your circle and drawing your chart. Okay, so I hope that's helpful. Um, you will do some stem and leaf plots. Uh, that is probably a new concept. You've probably seen it on your standardized tests at Cedarview. Um, it's very simple. Um, you can tell that from, from the examples. You can get through that just fine. We've got some histograms, and then we have mean, median, mode, and range. Um, those, again, are ideas that you've worked with before. Study the examples. Um, look at the sheets that I've sent you. Um, if all else fails, you can contact me through My Schoolworks. Also, make sure you're checking in My Schoolworks. If you have any incompletes, make sure that you check with me and get those made up before um, this is over. All right, and then don't forget you have the review at the end. Now the books are yours. You can keep those. You do not have to return those. Um, that's really about all I can think of. Contact me if you need help. I hope you have a great summer otherwise. I look forward to seeing you again in Algebra 2. Thank you.